So Daniel, you're very welcome. Um, well back into pre-season at the minute, matches uh, last week against Harps and another one coming up, match against Bray. Um, how's pre-season been so far this year? Yeah, uh, it's been good. It's been good, to be fair. Uh, it's been tough, as you'd expect. Um, wouldn't be pre-season if it wasn't tough. Um, but no, we're all enjoying it, you know. Um, it's good to be back here. Good to be back um, back going again. It's been a long kind of off-season there for for most of us. So, uh, yeah, really enjoying it so far. I was at the match at the weekend. There were a few tasty tackles over on your side with the Bray, Bray player that you were up against that uh, definitely a few of them didn't have a pre-season feel about them. No, no, yeah, you're right. There was a few um, media tackles going on in that, but that's good. That's good. It's, it's, it's a game. No one wants to lose the game, so um that is what it is it's you know get that's 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 what it is it's getting back on the pitch and you, there's going to be contact there's going to be tackles it's both teams when they won the game no one wants to lose you know even though they're only pre-season games they don't necessarily mean much um you like to think it was a tackle there to be won you would go and win it um you know instead of thinking them oh i might get injured here so a few bumps and a few bruises after like but uh, i think we've all came up came away unscathed and that was good. In terms of the preseason, Daniel, I don't know. I would say, obviously, most of your time in England, you were playing on grass pitches. I don't know in terms of training on 3G or 4G pitches. Is there much of a difference when you do a preseason there? Like, you know, do you need more stretching afterwards, or is there any different type of work when you're training on that type of pitch every day? Yeah, you're right. It's it's relatively new to myself. Um, I've always been kind of used to grass pitches. Uh Although last year he would have done some work on Astro uh, down at uh, Shamrock Rovers, he would have flipped between the both. Um, but no, it, it, I think it's different players are, are um, have different needs. Like you know, there's players who might have uh, like previous injuries and that, like with knees and ankles or hips or whatever it may be that their body may not take to the the four G very well. Um, and like you said, so they maybe have to be a bit more cautious and maybe have to put on some more prehab work and things like that. But uh, for me personally, it's been fine. It, 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 my body doesn't really, my body doesn't really um, react different to, to whether it's grass or astro actually. So I suppose I could probably count myself fortunate enough in that, that I've never touched wood, that I've never had uh, any like bad knee injuries or anything like that. That'll stop me from training, them, training on it daily. Uh, and uh or playing on it so that's good for me personally you talked about like happy to be back obviously you're a local that moved away and had his career as well and came back you know is there just a sense outside the football of like just being settled back in Derry and back around people you know even if, even if you can't see most of them at the moment <laughs> like yeah it's true it is it's nice like i say like i don't know it isn't it's good to be back and I suppose for me personally, it's more like it's even good to have a bit of normality back in my life, you know, even for the last year and a bit there, living in Dublin away from family and friends and kids and whatever else. So it's good to just have that nice day to day lifestyle again, you know, um, me personally, I think it actually helps me more with the fact that I'm back here and I'm settled and I've got family and everything else. I'm occupied, my days occupied, you know, it's. And then if you find yourself having spare time, you want to utilize it. You maybe want to go to the gym. You want to do something else. You just it's it's it is good, and it's just good because psychologically you want to be in a good place, you know, before you even go on to play play football. So that's definitely where I'm at. The moment, like you know, it's like I said, it is nice to be back, and it's nice to have the kind of familiar surroundings around myself. And obviously, um, played here previously, so I know how good it can be. So. Yeah, it was uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's exciting for me as well. Like, very excited about the uh, about what's going to happen this year. You were talking about you know having a bit of free time. I don't know what age your kids are. Have you had to become a master since since Christmas? You've had to have you had to take up a parting teaching career? Or are they a bit young for that? No, you're right. I've got a yeah, a one of twelve who's uh, first year. So that's been testing to say the least. Um, that's why I probably couldn't wait to get out the pre-season so I could get out the door <laughs> and leave her to do it. But uh, overall, it's been um, obviously it's difficult times for everybody at the moment. Like and like you say, the the whole homeschooling and things is very new to 
a lot of us, especially uh, myself and that, you know. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, that's like you say, I've got, there's plenty, I've got the missus and um, plenty of others around to kind of help help out, like a lot smarter than myself. Back to the football wise, like you obviously um, had that breakthrough year when Derry came up the first division and then went the Premier Division. And like that was a very exciting side to play. And you were a young player, like that's not to make you feel old, but that will be coming up on 10 years ago this year. Like, what are your memories of, of that first spell and looking through you getting a lot of regular first team football? Yeah, uh, very good memories. When I think back then, like over, like you say, it's coming up in 10 years. Like, you think back over the last 10 years, you think and go, when when did I, what season or what year did I really enjoy playing football? And that's definitely that 2011 year is definitely one that, that's, that stands out. Like, you know, the personnel we had in the dressing room at the time, you know, a great mixture of youth and, uh, and, uh, I wouldn't say old, but youth and, and more experience and that, like, you know, but, um, you know, like I said, we had the likes of, Kevin Leary, Rory Higgins, Jared Doherty, even Stuart Grecian from Scotland, and you would like some younger boys like the Shane and Patrick McElhinney, James, myself, Dave McDade, Stephen McLaughlin coming on. You know, it was a really good, um, enjoyable. So Eddie McKellen also there too, of course. Um, a really good, enjoyable kind of time. It was a just an enjoyable. Like even he loved coming to training every day. He. Um, you know, you look forward to seeing the boys. You look forward to the games on Friday. It was like it was. It was like Christmas and every Friday, because just like I say, we, we had such a good team, and obviously, but but unlucky in that sense. Like you know, um, that we possibly didn't achieve more than what we did. Obviously, we won the the league cup that year, uh, even though I missed the the final due to suspension. <laughs> um, but you know, I think for three quarters of that season we looked really strong uh yeah it was my memories of it or it was a season like we were absolutely playing it was actually your old John over and then rohan Ricket there that he scored one but right up until that like there he had come up and we're very much on the hunt for the title that year which many people forget about i suppose yeah uh i think we could probably blame james a little bit for that for being selfish and leaving halfway through the season you know uh because he was obviously such a such a big part of the squad that in that year like you know um and enough for getting my name in scored 20 goals that season you know um so there you go uh when you when you look back when you look back and you think god we had all them players and we had them goals in the team and the threat that we had um you think god but unfortunately we walked at that time it was the year that Sean Rovers qualified for the the Europa League group stages and that, so they were obviously a very strong squad at the time under Michael O'Neill, and then you had a strong Sligo squad as well under Paul Cook. So, um, obviously, you could possibly say we were we kind of if it, if it had been a year or two later, then it may have been a different story. You know, you're talking about strong squads. I suppose it's always interesting to get the perspective of someone else that's come from another club in the league. You've you had the time with Rovers. When you look around the league now, like who are the exciting players? Okay, you did play well against Derry, but who are the players when you came back and you're playing? You're like, like your man's a good player, or he really stood out in the games that you've played against them. I don't. There's quite a few to be fair. Like, I don't really want to just hang like hang a few yeah. up on the you know, kind of pedestal. Like you know, obviously the time the lads who've kind of moved on now, like like it's Jack Byrne, R. Mac and F, local lad. Um, you know, very good players, very exciting. Obviously, I could see them see them uh, daily and see you could see their their quality albeit rovers do have quite a number of players similar to that like you know uh and then obviously you've got the dundalk team who another local lad michael duffy and then obviously patrick as well um two unbelievable talents you know so i think if you look for most squads in the league or teams in the league you would probably be able to pick out at least one maybe two in some on some clubs you know that you go yeah he's a good player you know there's no I was probably guilty of it myself when I came back that I probably maybe didn't respect it enough, you know. Maybe thought you could, you know, because you've been from where you came, that it's going to be okay. The players aren't going to be maybe as good. But I very quickly learned again that um, you have to respect everyone and respect uh, each team because there was no, there is no easy game in this league, you know. 
In terms of position, like most people will remember you as a, as a fullback in the first bit, like a forward, a lap, and he even sometimes playing as wing back. Other times he, he dropped on at centre half and stuff as well. Is there a position where you, like, if someone says to you, that's where I want to play or that's the type of setup that I want to play in, where would you want to be in that starting 11? Just a wee funny stuff. As long as I was in the starting 11, I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother <laughs> me. Um, but no, I don't think there's, like I say, I've, I've got a decent bit of versatility about me that I can, that I'm comfortable in playing in a number of positions, you know. Um, I like to think that I'm quite comfortable on the ball and that's so regardless of where I play in the pitch, but naturally being left, left footed and kind of applied my trade as a left back for many years, whatever it be, left back or left, left wing back, it wouldn't bother me. It doesn't, there's no real personal preference to it. Um, in terms of, you know, one of the things I was speaking to Nathan Gertzide about was just the effect of empty stadiums and, you know, playing not in front of people. You know, how did you find that last season when, when it went back? Was it just very strange to be in the rooms? Like, you know, like what is better or what is worse about it, I suppose? There's nothing really better about it. It's all worse. It's it's me personally, it's really it's it's not it's not the same. Nowhere near the same. You can uh from a player's point of view, there's probably a lot more personal motivation you have to go through because you maybe don't don't feel the uh, the nervousness and that through uh, going into a game or the kind of the butterflies as such the worry whatever it may be um, by not having fans there it really does it's it really did, does take it away from or take the enjoyment away from it I don't know obviously from a fan's point of view they they probably feel the same uh, it, so the sooner the fans are allowed back in the stadium the better. Um, you know, it's even like you talk about all these big European nights and things like that. We were in, I played in Europe last year, and it didn't really feel too dissimilar to a Friday night in the in the electricity league. You know, because of that, the lack of the fans and the lack of excitement about it, it just feels. Some of the games actually can feel like a training match, just or like a pre-season feel. So, to try and get yourself actually personally motivated to treat it as if there was two thousand or five thousand fans in the stadium. It sometimes can be difficult, like you know, but it's like I said, it is the kind of way of, the way of the world at the minute. So we obviously, as footballers, have to learn to deal with that, and um, and then try and get yourself in the, in the right frame of mind to go out and still put on a good performance. In terms of you know some other players that I've talked to, like they've they've grounds they don't play in that those type of things, or they've lucky grounds, or they've. Grounds for just they have good memories of. In terms of the other grounds around the league, are there any you're like, oh, look, I scored a cracker there, or played really well there, that, that stuck out in your memory of places you've played before, either for Derry or Rovers? Uh, no, there's possibly not once one place, apart from whenever I was at Rovers last year, I'd look forward to coming to the Randeville. That was about the only one that was would have stood out for me. It wouldn't, you know, going to Inchicore or going to the was it the RSC and whatever they're not really exciting places to go and play football you know and you know there's a number of stadiums throughout the league that I have scored at and whatever but there's no no real ground that I will kind of go oh we've got so and so coming up in two weeks time can't wait to play them and I've got a good record against them there's no one really like that you know obviously like I said the last year year and a half it was exciting to come back and play, come back and play in the brand well um obviously for reasons you can go you, you could come home after it as well <laughs> so it was uh, it was easier than driving three hours um as we talked about uh you're a you're a decade older than you were when you were here the last time what do you feel in terms of like experience or knowledge that you can bring to the dressing room that maybe you were looking up to a Sturdy Greeson or a Barry Malloy or a Kevin Deary the last time. Like, what would you hope to pass on to the the twenty one year olds or the twenty year olds that are around the squad at the moment? Yeah, you see, yeah, I was asked this question actually last week regarding what what I see myself, my role in the team. You know, my role first and foremost is to is to perform. Like, you know, I didn't come here to try and educate people as such. Obviously, that comes along with it, but you have to perform it to play well. You know, otherwise you don't play. <laughs> But um, obviously, sometimes then people maybe look at you and go, "Well, well you were, he was here. He's done that. He came to Derry and then he moved on, and he was at this club and that club." You know, and then I can, like you said, you're referencing back to 
how it was when in 2011, whenever I had, like I said, the Kevin Deary's, the Rory Higgins, the Screechians, Eddie McKillians. And when I then think back and go, well, how was that? Like, how were they? I was 22, 21, whatever it may be, 21. And uh, I could just go out and enjoy and run about like a kind of child because there was quite a few boys at the same age and, and just enjoy it. And then them boys would have kind of been the elder kind of sort of senior players at the time, you know, and they always led by example. So I think that's all you can do. You can communicate and you can talk to younger players and you can try and help them along the way. But I think you have to conduct the way you conduct yourself on a day-to-day basis, uh, on a match night, how you perform, you know, Players aren't silly. They, they can look and see how someone handles themselves, how they perform, how they conduct themselves on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, doesn't necessarily mean I'm not, I'm not saying what I everything I do you must copy, but it's just like you know sometimes you can you can then just pick up little person little things that someone maybe mightn't do, and it can be an infectious thing. And someone may someone might then just attach and say, well, maybe I should do that as well or something, you know, but. That's all, like I, like I said, my, my role probably has changed because just the way it is, age and experience and being, um, being at a number of clubs. Um, and obviously there's some lads still only setting out, setting out their own journeys and their careers, you know. So obviously communi- I just try to communicate on a daily basis with lads, you know, because we're all here to try and improve, try and improve us personally and obviously Derry City as a whole, uh, the football club. Um, so... Yeah, whatever I can do to help any young lad or, well, a bit young or someone of some age to myself, then, of course, I would. Uh, I'd love to do that, too. A um, couple of quick ones, uh, lighted, lighthearted, they finish up. In terms of, like, having played the water and stuff, who is the, the best player or the hardest player that you came, came up against in, in terms of your own career? Oh, hardest? I think the hardest that I probably have to start to say when I made my international debut. You talk about getting thrown at the deep end. Uh, I think I just moved to Burnley six months and then that off season in June, right before the 2012 World Cup, Northern Ireland thought it'd be a good idea to just play Netherlands in the Amsterdam Arena and their last game before they go to the World Cup. Uh, and Needless to say, we lost, I think it was 6 0. 6 0. And it was 5 0 at half time. And I came off at half time. And who was up against Iron Robin? You know? Um, so that was a bit of a kind of baptism of fire, you know? But there was a number of players too. Like even players maybe they, at the time weren't big, huge players. But then they, further on in the years in their, career, in their careers, they've became massive players. Like I remember playing against Germany in the under 21s. Uh, against Tony Cruz, and I could not, touch, I couldn't get near him. Uh, I think he played right midfield that day, and I think he scored after like three minutes from like thirty yards, and it was, I was like, wow, just pure shell shocked. Um, but in terms of coming across like in the English league, obviously being a fullback there, um, you, you, there's lots, lots of tricky wingers, lots of them. Um, and we're playing against Walford Zaha one day, and I swear you could not shift him. Like his feet were so quick, uh, you see that week in week out in the Premier League with uh, Crystal Palace, and that you know they still tormenting fullbacks, and they gave me a bit of a tour of time one one Saturday afternoon as well. Um, moving off the of football for a wee bit and just more general, like we have a, a mix of players, lads that are local, lads that have come to the club or whatever. Um, you know, for you being back, like, what's the best thing about being back in Derry? Is it you know? Something you get your hands on in terms of eating? Is it just being close to people? Like, what's what's the best thing about being back in a, in a non footballing sense? You you had you had it in the head there with the with the eating. There's so we are. I feel personally we're spoiled for choice here in in Derry for the food. Albeit I can only do it every so often. I can't really indulge too much. Um, I have to be careful on what I on what I eat, uh, especially now at my age, so to speak. Um, so I think. I think just overall, you know, just being around, just being around on a day to day basis, being able to just do things again, you know, like going for going for a walk along the quay in the evening with the kids, or just the small things. It is, it's the small things. There's no real, obviously, all the food and the friends and all that there is great, but it's just it's just little small things that you enjoy, you know, sitting down. That's, that's, I'm making myself sound old here now by getting to sit down with a fire lit <laughs> at the weekend and just chill, you know, 